Hey everyone. Hey everyone, it's Ross here on MGF Customs, back for another weekly vlog. Sorry about that, the sun is uh, really bright. It's about to go down actually, and you think uh, vlogging since last August, I would think of these things, but I don't. But anyway, I have got a bunch of cool things to show you while I'm busy trying to not trip on other things. So today I was very excited to get a new package in with Phoenix Customs Stealth Super Soldier, of course, Captain America in his stealth suit from the Winter Soldier. This one I've had on pre-order for a long time and I've been looking forward to it for a while now. And as you can see, the final production result, again, Phoenix has delivered. This is hands down the best custom Lego stealth suit Captain America to ever hit the market. The pad printing is phenomenal. The shield is phenomenal. The helmet is fantastic. Again, as I already uh, showed it off, I think, what was that, 2019 or early 2020 when the original Captain America was shipped out. That might have been last year, though. I mean, the years are blending together. This one is like extra nostalgic, though, because my first ever custom from Phoenix, actually, all the way back in, I want to say 2014, 2015, was his very first stealth suit Captain America printed minifigure pad printed even back then, too, when he first got started with these. So this is just super cool to see that difference going from from 2014-15 to now. What was even crazier though was I felt two containers in the package this time and inside was Moff Gideon and I completely forgot that I pre-ordered this figure as well at the end of last year. As you can see, Phoenix has developed the definitive Moff Gideon custom minifigure. Once again, pad printed just like official Lego, even including the Dark Saber by Brick Arms this time with that pad printed white effect, which looks amazing. You also have Moff Gideon's pistol by Brick Arms as well. And the likeness to Giancarlo Esposito looks even better in person than I was expecting. And it's also double-sided but you'll see the alternative expression in the eventual review. For now though, I am just so excited to now replace this minifigure in my displays with the makeshift one that I've had for like the last, I don't know, I mean, eight months at this point probably, which was just like a first order officer head that I painted a little bit with like an Inferno squad torso and it was okay and it did the job, but now this is the real Moff Gideon. And it also marks the uh, complete disappearance of my incentive to make a custom Moff Gideon myself. But yeah, he looks so great in front of OMV Customs Dark Troopers here with the Brick Arms Dark Trooper Blasters. I still can't wait to paint up the Dark Troopers from Tristan over at the Custom Brick Builder though, who unfortunately is now leaving the community. Real quick though, one more thing. Here is Phoenix Customs' new stealth suit cap paired up with the Black Widow minifigure from the Winter Soldier by life brick i've been waiting to pair up these two minifigures from these two sellers for a while now since last year actually and it does not disappoint my motivation to ever go back and make my own custom winter soldier minifigures has definitely plummeted today now these just came in the mail too and i am really excited i might even do a video on these on the main channel but of course these are a, an assortment of knockoffs from wandavision by wm minifigures Got these off of an AliExpress store, and as you can see, I mean, granted the faces are never great with these for the most part, but I mean, these are incredibly useful. I don't plan on making a white vision myself, but this will do great in things like skits and edits and displays, even if the eyes are a little close together and the face on him is a little wonky too, but the Scarlet Witch here is definitely worth making note of as I am considering using that hairpiece with the detachable uh, custom crown there for my actual custom Wanda, but I haven't decided yet. And then also Agatha is just incredibly cool with a gray array of printing here. The trans purple ghost piece, the fabric is surprisingly good. She has the dark hold tile, the custom trans purple fire pieces for her. And then obviously Wanda has them in red as you saw. Um, I mean, you replace these minifigures heads with like official Lego ones 
and they all wind up looking really cool. Then we have Monica Rambeau here as well. You can see we've got Agatha back there in, I guess, the uh, yogi outfit that we saw in, I believe that was episode three, four, I forget. Um, and then we have the two kids, Wanda's kids back here as well, along with the Halloween costumes of Scarlet Witch and Vision. Again, the faces are pretty wonky, but for the most part, once again, do look good in displays. And we also have Mephisto back here, the iconic meme who I don't think will ever be able to be uh, taken seriously in the MCU now, unfortunately. Um, but he's included back there too, and he's kind of weird looking. I don't really know what they were going for with this Mephisto here. It's definitely pretty odd looking. Um, but yeah, I did not get Quicksilver for some reason. I could have sworn I threw him in the order. I guess not, um, but I'm still gonna probably move ahead anyway and do a video of these on the main channel because I think they are so interesting and there's definitely a really interesting conversation to be had around knockoffs as always. It's kind of been an ongoing dialogue of my channel since like 2018 at this point. Um, so yeah. All right, now check this out. Last night, I just spent a few hours painting a couple of Morai birds because it is Aubrey Ochoa's birthday uh, at Satellite Tides. And so I am really excited to be shipping these off really soon here um, as these turned out really cool. And so we've got the regular Morai bird. These are just like basically uh, Lego Friends owls, except I kind of sanded off the peaks up above uh, the eyebrows, you know, like kind of the owl's crests there um, before I got to work with the paint painting process on each one of these and it's a pretty simple and straightforward painting process not really going too crazy with high detail because it really doesn't matter for quick little things like this and quick little gifts for friends um but you can see I kind of went nuts with the dry brushing on these and it turned out really good and yeah so I think these are also just generally a lot better than the Morai that I painted for myself last year which looks kind of ridiculous to me now but I still do like how I painted some of the fur there but I do still kind of like how I painted some of the uh colors there regardless um yeah I think this is a lot better with the uh, eyes especially I think the eyes make this even cooler and obviously the head shape being much more accurate so I'm just kind of doing a photo shoot with these right now because uh, I am about to ship them off and pretty much whenever I ship off quick little custom works like this I uh, make sure to do a full-blown photo shoot and get some video clips and stuff like this actually um, to make sure I have content and uh, always you know I can refer to these images and include them in graphics and uh, videos and things like that if I need to. I did also get some new figures in this past week including Qui-Gon from the Black series the new reissue featuring the updated face scan print on the upscaled phantom menace card back so these are exclusive to best buy actually and he was sold out for a while because i hesitated too long um, but then he went back in stock briefly so i was able to get him shipped to store but originally these were not always exclusive to best buy because actually the first two figures to be offered from the black series on this upscaled phantom menace 1999 inspired packaging was obi-wan and then also i've got him over here maul and these two were originally offered at uh, Celebration Chicago as Hasbro's exclusives for that convention. I was able to get one of each at the time and now all the way in 2021 I'm able to complete the Trinity with Qui-Gon. They're also offering Mace Windu and Jar Jar and the Battle Droid on this card back but really I just wanted to make sure I had this set and man do they look so good together. They weren't the only figures I got in either at you know, I, I don't know what's going on with this. My whole life, I've just been plagued with random calyx once my hair gets a little too long and uh, it just, it never ends, man. But anyway, I got in the X-Men Days of Future Past two pack with uh, Charles Xavier and Magneto. Now, believe it or not, I'm not really the biggest fan of like the original X-Men films, X-Men 1, 2, or 3, but I was always a huge fan of First Class and Days of Future Past is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time ever. So it was always a no brainer that I would at least pick up this set. And I also do have Mystique up there. Can you see Mystique? She's right there and so because I have her opened um, I figured I might wind up opening these guys too to display with her um, because the packaging is really not that great to be honest with you it's just kind of okay um, but yeah I got these discounted and really excited because I mean I while they might be discounted figures and everything and uh, really not that rare these are phenomenal retail interpretations of Michael Fassbender's Magneto and uh, of course James McAvoy's Professor X um, and also you have the swappable heads with Ian Mc Kellen and uh, 
you know, you can see you've also got Patrick Stewart up there too. So it doesn't really make sense for the Magneto body because of course that is the 70s armor he wore in Days of Future Past, but they still offer the Ian McKellen head with the uh, helmet there anyway. So this is just kind of like the ultimate Charles Xavier and Magneto two-pack. The wheelchair is not accurate and uh, actually really underwhelming. It's the same one that was included with the more exclusive and the more rare uh, Logan set. So, I mean, that's kind of, you know, that, that is what it is, but um, yeah. Now, Loki finally debuted this week, which was kind of wild. I mean, even though they've been hammering us with the promotional material for it, there was just something kind of crazy about uh, having the third show of the original lineup of Marvel Disney Plus shows that were announced back in 2019. It's like, man, two years already passed. They've already developed these shows, and now we're already streaming the last of the original three. So it was great, and uh, it's proven to be an amazing character study for Loki, even in just the first episode. Literally, one scene broke down his entire character in moments, and it was really cool. I posted the reaction for that along with the new episode, episode 7 of the Bad Batch Battle Scars, where, spoilers, but it's Monday now, uh, Rex makes his debut in the series, and it's not something I take for granted. Um, seeing him in the Clone Wars animation is still something that is just so special to me after the Clone Wars was cancelled for all those years before being brought back. It's just kind of in my head still to this day never to take seeing my favorite characters of all time Anakin, Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, Rex ever in the Clone Wars animation so um yeah but the episode where Wrecker's inhibitor ship finally goes off and they go to Bracca where Cal Kestis is to go and infiltrate one of the early Clone Wars era Venators to use the medical station to do exactly what Ahsoka did at the end of Siege of Mandalore uh, to remove all their inhibitor chips it was just a brilliant episode with amazing uh, reminiscent cues back to victory and death from the Kiners and I mean it was just phenomenal and there was a really powerful moment, especially at the end between Wrecker and uh, Omega. And I really appreciated this episode so much. And it was, I mean, this week's Bad Batch episode was the best of the series so far, in my opinion. And I cannot wait to get part two pretty soon here. But anyway, uh, today is June 13th, which means, well, I guess my birthday is today, posting this vlog. Um, so June 14th for you, um, Flag Day. But uh, Halo Infinite had its big uh, reveal yesterday for you, but I actually just watched it. So I'm going to play back the footage of uh, the new campaign reveals and the full-blown Halo Infinite multiplayer reveals. So uh, the hype you're about to see has been five years in the making. All right, yeah, so I thought I would put this at the end of the vlog, but today we are finally, I believe, at the end of this Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase uh, that is taking place right now on June 13th, so yesterday for you. Uh, some new Halo Infinite footage, um, supposedly of the multiplayer, and I am really looking forward to this because it's our first time seeing new Halo Infinite footage for the first time in, like, a year since the original gameplay reveal and then the subsequent um, borderline year-long delay that they needed. So it's been a while and hopefully now we're gonna get to see the results of the delay and just how much they've been able to finalize and polish the next installment of the Halo series that of course we've been waiting for since 2015. I mean, and, and really honestly for me, Halo 5 was such a miss. I, I feel like I have not had Halo really part of my life as much since, I mean, got as far back as 2014, 15, around when I probably eased off and um, that was it. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's been a long time. I've really missed Halo in my life. Hopefully now, after all this time in development, everybody at 343 with Microsoft and Joe Staten now at the helm have been able to uh, bring us a Halo game that will truly deliver. Uh, like Halo 4 did for me, but we'll see. Ah, oh, the main batteries are shut down. We're stuck out here. Oh, man. You have one bullet against an entire army. What can you do on your own? I told you. It's enough. I 
understand. There's not There's much not time. time. <laughs> Cortana is gone. She's been deleted. How? By you? Of course not. Did you hit your head or something? Don't you remember? My instructions were to enter this installation, imitate Cortana, and lock her down for retrieval. Yours were to take her back to the infinity for deletion. So if it wasn't you... There's something else. On successful deployment, my deletion routine was supposed to complete. Still here. <laughs> Good. Good? Something stopped your deletion. We need to find out why. But this wasn't the mission. The missions change. They always do. Are you sure? Oh God. God. Of course, you can't have a Halo game without multiplayer. <laughs> Xbox Series X, you'll be able to infinite multiplayer action at up to 120 frames per second. Finally, I'm very happy to announce that Halo Infinite's first free-to-play multiplayer season and Infinite story-driven campaign will launch together this holiday. A oh, here we go. Upon us. A new generation built to fight. Oh my god. Together, we are unstoppable. <laughs> are you ready? Uh, I've been ready for five years. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh man! Enemy flag. Returning to base. <laughs> Ordnance drop inbound. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh my god. The flag is ours. <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Show me what you can do. Oh man. Oh man. god oh wow i was not expecting a look at the campaign at all today never mind just how absolutely wild the multiplayer reveal just was i, I mean I there was so much to unpack right there from cortana's supposed deletion to uh infinity still being active a seemingly a copy of cortana i i, I 
I, I need to rewatch that to unpack that conversation more. So much was just dropped in that one moment and she flying through that space. I mean, with only one bullet and igniting the fusion coil, the graphics, I mean, just everything looks so incredible and so wildly improved. This is exactly what I was hoping for after the delay, the multiplayer especially, I don't think is going to lie this time. This is not 2015 where we're gonna get something different at launch. This looks indicative of exactly what I hope is to come for Halo Infinite and this looks like it has the potential to be the greatest Halo game of all time and it's hard to imagine them not delivering after what we just saw oh my god oh my god instantly created more iconic moments in the history of halo trailers you only have one bullet it's enough Oh my god. And never mind, and, and Cortana's line, if you knew how you were going to die, how would you live your life differently? That took me off guard, because Halo Infinite, as far as we are aware, is designed to be a soft reboot. Now, originally, when Halo 4 was coming out and 343 took over, they promised the Reclaimer trilogy, and obviously those plans got totally fudged, and, and, and everything really went to hell come 2015. Um, but... Ultimately, we were all still hoping, and, and not really hoping, but believing that Halo 6 would be the end of the Master Chief story. And that Halo 6 would be finally the moment where Master Chief dies, or just, again, disappears, missing in action. But if there are any Halo fans out there, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. I will be making a Master Chief using the 3D printed parts by Nate's Minifigs come this fall. And I do want to mention here, uh, speaking of Nate's Minifigs and the parts that he is producing and you know, the 3D printed custom Lego parts, I'm also hoping to be doing Noble Team. So kind of a Halo celebration showcase with launch of infinite and also um just kind of a legacy showcase to complement it in the form of noble team if i can pull it off around that time we will see definitely with his parts that would make the process definitely his parts make it very doable so on that note though I will catch you guys in the next vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking around. I know that this kind of prolonged the length of the video, but um, all right, everybody. I, uh, I'll see you next time. So stay safe out there. Take care. And uh, all right, bye-bye.